Hey, welcome to the My Inner Struggle podcast. My name is Laura Ferry. I'm so happy you're here. We're talking about everything, personal growth, lifestyle, and business. And I'm glad that you're listening. I'm glad that you're here. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, then I'm happy you came back and I'm happy that you're getting value from what I have to offer. This isn't, you know, if you are new here, this isn't about a fancy production at all. I believe in content over production value. Um, so there's a good chance that you may hear my dog or my cats running around or chasing each other. In fact, um, my kids aren't here now, but in a few future episodes, somebody may come by and ask to heat up leftovers. You never know. Um, so if you've been here for a while, um, I'm really glad that you're here and I'm, I'm glad that you're finding value in what I have to share. I wanted to take the time today to sort of reintroduce myself and, um, share my why, um, for anyone ha that hasn't dug back that far in the blog or the podcast. Um, and it's a very vulnerable, um, podcast actually, because I've made the decision to share this. Um, and I haven't shared a lot of what I'm about to share today in specific detail. And I definitely go into further detail, um, in the book that I've been writing for a long time as I move throughout my journey of personal growth and development. Um, but I had some breakthroughs recently that I wanted to share and it is truly vulnerable. And I was talking with a new client last night and she was saying how, um, she started reading things and she felt so much less alone. And that was always the goal. I have never, um, really felt like I, um, belonged in any one, um, group or anything like that. Um, I grew up in a very tumultuous household, I would say, and, um, sharing the things that felt like they brought me shame for a long time has really make, has helped me come out of my shell and sharing my message and knowing that I'm not alone and that there are so many other people out there. And I, that's, that's the whole goal. The whole goal of the self-love club is so that you can gain support from people that are going through the same thing and specifically women. Um, I think that we carry ourselves with all of these things behind us and it's hard to move forward. Sometimes it's hard to be the one that's taking care of everyone else doing all of the things and trying to hold together ourselves with glue and duct tape all along to make sure that everybody else is okay. So I really wanted to share some of this with you today and it's a little raw and I'm really going to do my best not to cry because you didn't turn this on to listen to me cry. Um, but I recently, um, have been contemplating how I was going to go about telling someone close to me about the abuse that I suffered when I was a child. And it was sort of stopping me from finishing my book, um, probably subconsciously, I guess, but I was thinking, how could I ever release this without talking to her about it? And, um, thought about just burying my head in the sand and just going, well, it's, I could wait another 10 years or something like that. It doesn't, it doesn't really have to be now, but that's not what I'm about. I keep pushing myself and putting myself in uncomfortable situations so that I can help other people get through their uncomfortable situation. You are not alone. And seriously, I know I keep saying this, this is why I do this because I wanted other people to feel not alone. So the, the, the journey of the blog started, um, when my mother died and a lot of people will say to me, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That's so horrible. And I'm, and I'm not, and I appreciate that. And the thing that I realize now, almost 10 years later, nine years later, is that, um, it was releasing me from so much. 
I didn't realize, you know, it took a lot of therapy and coaching and digging and learning and reading and writing and all of those things to come to terms with how this all came about or where all of my why came from. Why do I act? Why was I acting the way that I was? Why would I shut off people? Why would I hide? Why all of those things? And it's really hard to sit there and stare at yourself in the mirror and not look away. I swear to God, it's got to be some sort of fucking superpower not to look away and just to keep looking and digging and searching and figuring out where it's all coming from. The hard part, I think, for me is sharing it, which seems odd because here I am on a podcast sharing it, but this is the most anxiety producing part of it. But I know just, you know, like I heard last night on the phone, you know, she was upset and she was crying and she was like, I just, it, it makes me feel so good to know that I'm not alone. I'm not going through this by myself. And that's why the strong sense of community is so important to me because I never felt like I had a safe environment to share it in. And so I created that. And if you are someone that is going through something like that, a personal growth journey and wanting to um, dig and need support and um, accountability is the big thing. Um, Just like we're going through any diet, if you can show up, you know, to your fitness coach or whatever each week and be held accountable, we can do this. it's, it just goes much more easy, right? Like we have this group that we're sort of, um, in this journey together. And so the self-love club is just that. Um, and if you are interested, just go to lauraferry.com and click on the self-love club. You can also follow, uh, through my inner struggle and click on the self-love club and find it that way. And creating this great group of women that are trying to better themselves and figure out, how to move forward and fill their cup and be satisfied in their one shot at life too, without sacrificing their own happiness. Um, I got married really young. Um, I don't think that I took the time to get to know who I was. And um, after going through a lifetime of physical, mental, and sexual abuse, I was looking for someone to save me. I was looking for someone to be there for me. And I found that, you know, in my, in my ex-husband, but as I matured and started discovering myself, things changed for me. And, um, the, the last five years of self discovery have been nothing short of fucking eye opening. It's, it's crazy how much is, um, how much we carry with us into our adulthood and then trying to heal from those traumas too. And knowing that we can move forward and we don't have to repeat those same patterns. So my why, my why is to break the fucking cycle. I do not parent the way my mother parented and I wear my heart on my sleeve and I am vulnerable with my children and I speak to them with respect and they respect me as well. And that was really, really important to me. And I didn't even realize what patterns I was trying to break until I started digging deep. The thing that I wanted to share is that, um, and it's, and I only just started sharing this with a few friends and people. And then with this family member that I was speaking of, um, it's, it's hard to process and there's a lot of shame that comes along with it. And I'm continuing to work on that. So when I say let's grow together, it's a process. We're never going to stop. Even the top motivational speakers, Mel Robbins, Tony Robbins, um, uh, Rachel Hollis. I'm a huge fan. They continue to grow. They continue to learn more, to dig deeper, to heal, to, to grow. And that's so important when we stay stagnant, that's kind of like when it stops and we become unhappy because we're not learning anything new. 
So the thing that I wanted to share was that I was sexually abused for a number of years. I don't know how long exactly um, by a family member when I was young. I, it was probably from the time I was six or seven until I was maybe 11 or 12. Maybe. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but the whole point was that I never told my mom. Till the day she died, I never told my mom. And I wanted to share that with a family member, um, because I do divulge this in my book in further detail. Um, and it was really stopping me from moving forward. So we all have these things, right. That we're, we know what these secrets that we hold and it's so much better to let it out and then to heal from that and move forward. And I don't know what I was expecting her reaction to be, but I didn't want her to be angry was the reason that it took me so long to say that, which is also the same reason I didn't tell my mom part of the reason. My mother was the um, source of abuse in my childhood. And I'm no longer angry at her and I'm no longer upset about it. It's more um, something that I've accepted and know that she did the best that she could with the tools that she had coming from an environment of her own. Um, I could only imagine what that must have been like. And so I don't blame her. The only part that gets me is that I wish that she had done the work to do better. And it was something that she struggled with all the time. I know that, um, you know, I remember as probably a preteen or something um, that uh, she had gone to therapy and she had been addressing certain things, but she never really like dug in and resolved it. And the way I felt singled out in a family um, really, um, I didn't really get it until recent, until more recently, I would say in the last year or two. And what happened was during all of this change in 2022 to 2023, my um, younger brother came to stay with me for a while. And it was kind of a really cool experience because he's five years younger than I am. And by the time I was grown, um, or by the time he was grown, I was already out of the house. I was probably already married. Um, and so we didn't really have this adult friendship. Um, he later on went into the military and then when he came back, he was married and then started a family of his own. So he was staying here and it was really neat because, um, we were getting to know each other and we were hanging out one night. Um, and he kind of stopped and he said, you know, I want you to know that you never deserved what mom did to you. And I stopped me in my tracks because I didn't really know that he knew any of that because he was considerably younger. I, I, and I, it was just kind of something that I held. Um, and I think as a kid, you're like, why am I being singled out? Like what is so, what is so special or unspecial about me? So what I've learned through a lot of therapy and my own self reflection and, um, all the growth is that I reminded her of her, which is an unfortunate position to be in when you are being raised by a narcissist because a narcissist hates no one more than themselves. And if you're not familiar with the, I know narcissism gets thrown around all the time now, but There really is no one a narcissist hates more than themselves. And it doesn't appear that way because they appear to love themselves and everyone around, but it's a facade basically. So, um, from the moment I was little, whether I did something that re reminded her of her, or I, I don't know exactly what, but in this whole journey, what's been interesting is, and I said this to a friend fairly recently is that Evelyn reminds me of me 
And so as I'm going through all of these things and I'm, and, uh, you know, we can be, I made a video about it probably almost a year ago and we've all been in the place where we want to lose our shit on our kids, right? They're not listening. They're, um, you know, the room is a mess or they're just, they're talking back or they're doing something else. You have, you have the power to pause and not react, or you have the power to react. Um, so like really the choice is yours. What are you going to do with that? Yep. And so every time something like that happens, I'm, I'm thinking about where, where, what's the impact of this? Could I get pissed off and, and yell at them? Sure. I could, or you know what? I could just breathe for a couple minutes and say, all right, listen, this isn't really working for me. You're going to do what I asked you to do because that's what we need to do. Sorry. You don't like it, but this is how it is. I certainly could never fathom doing to my children what my mom did to me ever. And so with that being said, the sexual abuse went just unnoticed. And I was desperately searching for a safe space for a really, really long time, which is interesting because as my life evolved and then I became an adult and there's still, the abuse was still there basically until the day she died, honestly, but it wasn't physical anymore. It was just manipulation. Um, so all of this being said, and I can't, and it's, it's hard to believe that I'm even speaking these words, let alone they'll be posted for people to listen to and hopefully relate to and understand. And I'm getting off track because that's what happens. But as I was going through this journey, leaving that job, um, almost two years ago at this point, um, and exiting that relationship, those were both devastating to me. And I think part of that devastation was that I had found that safe space, but it wasn't really the safe space that I thought that I had. So it was very triggering for me. However, as the relationship was disintegrating, I really came to notice the similar patterns of abuse of narcissistic abuse specifically, and, um, trying to understand where I was supposed to land. Um, it didn't really make any sense. Um, I really, really struggled with that. However, that sent me on this almost tailspin of discovery. I really, really dug deep and never thought that I had been, never, never had I been so low in my whole life because I had, I didn't have the trust or I didn't have trust in my mother enough to feel that I could tell her, but this person, this uh, relationship that I was in made me take down the wall and he would always push tell me more, tell me more and created this safe space for me. But in the end, it really wasn't a safe space. And, um, really fueled my own growth, which is odd to think of, but I wouldn't be here now had I not gone through that immense heartbreak. I want to read just a page from my book right now, just to give you an idea. And I really hope to have this finished soon and in your hands so that you can better understand. And if you are someone that is suffering through the same thing, that you know that you're not alone. So this is in chapter three about where it began. I'll just kill myself was a phrase I heard more than any child or anyone should ever hear. I don't even know what the arguments were about. I was too young to understand it then. It all makes sense now. This began an ever evolving journey of narcissistic relationships, often giving, tiptoeing and putting other people's thoughts, emotions, moods and needs ahead of my own. 
The constant arguing, her storming out, threatening or warning to kill herself and speeding away molded me into a present day 42 year old female with an incredible heart, but an immense amount of fear of abandonment, often sacrificing my own value to make and keep others happy. As I said, my mother saw a lot of herself in me, but the thing is when someone thinks so little of themselves, that was an unfortunate position to be in. I cannot fathom the abuse she had been subjected to in her youth or the pain that simmered for decades to follow. I do know, as a mother, it's my job to do better. A constant theme and push for me is the fact that I don't want to become my mother. I know everyone says that, but I'm 100% certain. Some of what I refer to is on the surface, alone for one, but the rest lies beneath, feeling sorry for herself, not being able to provide for herself, always feeling like the victim, treating the people who loved her unkindly and without the respect they deserved, but most of all, being happy. That is my why. And I'm glad that I could share that with you today. I want you to think about the things in your life that don't feel right. That maybe aren't going the way that you had hoped them to and start thinking about how that could change. I didn't know what it was, but I, I knew, I knew I was always made for more and I can't really explain it. I just, I knew I had a message to share. And I'm really grateful for the encouragement of all the fucking strangers <laughs> um, who send me messages every day that it helps them. And I'm really grateful for the community that I have created through the self-love club. And we're, we're growing uh, in size and in personal growth. And it's really fucking exciting. And I love, um, being able to help people because helping people is my true passion. And I am really grateful that I could share this message with you today because this is one more step in my own healing journey that will keep me thriving in the right position, in the right direction. I said I wasn't going to cry, but it's all for a good cause. Um, if you are struggling keeping it together, if you are struggling with trauma from the past, if you are struggling loving yourself, if you are struggling just trying to gain some traction, join the self-love club. Check it out at myinnerstruggle.com and just give it a chance. So it's gaining confidence through connection and community. And I think it's going to be nothing short of fucking magical, quite honestly. And I truly, truly believe that. And this is everything that I ever dreamed of in the last 15 years as I started changing myself little by little. And I wrote this not that long ago, but I, and <laughs> I, uh, I think I actually wrote it in the blog this week, um, that I feel like I took the long way home and that's okay. Change takes time. Even if it's baby steps, just start moving in the right direction. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you for being here. Please do me a favor and hit subscribe wherever you're watching or listening. And please share it with a friend. That was the biggest form of support that you could ever give me. Check out the blog at myinnerstruggle.com. 
and follow me on Facebook and Instagram and sign up for the self-love club where we can grow together. I am thinking of you and sending you so much love. I'll see you soon.